All right, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. So uh, again, all praise to Yahweh Bahashram, Amashiach Yahweh Shah, and praise the Most High. So we're in the Feast of Tabernacles. I know we had the, uh, the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles was Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening. And so uh, Wednesday evening, Thursday, Friday, so we're pretty much like in the third day, coming into the third, to the third day of the Feast of Tabernacles. So we praise the Most High for His high holy days, His ceremonial laws, laws, statutes, and commandments in Yahweh in the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Come. So um, again, uh, we're going to go over um, the Feast of Tabernacles, and I'm going to bring a few different things out uh, concerning the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh, first of all, uh, when you read the scriptures, the Most High shows us that the Feast of Tabernacles was one of the highest high holy days that Israel had. It was one of the most eminent and prominent of the High Holy Days. And I know we look at the Passover, right? We look at the Day of Pentecost, but the Feast of Tabernacles, when you read the history of our people, right? Uh, the Feast of Tabernacles was pretty much one of the most joyous and uh, of, of all the uh, feast days that Israel had. Come, uh, when, when you read the history, it was one of the most joyous. Uh, history also teaches us that Abraham celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Jacob celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. So it goes all the way back. So I know when we read the scriptures and we read how we came out of Egypt, out of captivity, out of bondage, and the Most High gave us his high holy days, you know, the, the law, statutes, commandments, and we think, well, that was the first time that we started celebrating the high holy days. That wasn't. Okay, the, the, our forefathers, the patriarchs, they celebrated the high holy days also. Kun? Yeah, we weren't, we weren't formed into a nation, of course, at that time, but they celebrated the high holy days. Kun? I mean, the high holy days go all the way back to Adam. They go all the way back to Adam. Okay? Uh, Enoch, Shem, Methuselah, they all understood the high, high holy days of the Mosai, the ceremonial laws. Okay, Con? So, Feast of Tabernacles, um, in the Hebrew, is called, yeah, throw it up. It's called, uh, let's see, Kug Ha Sawak Wath. Right? And so, I'm, I'm going to spell it. <laughs> this Hebrew, I'm going to spell, of course, I'm going to spell it in English letters, but you know, it's the Hebrew. It's uh, C H A A G, that's Chag, and Ha. Sawakwath is Feast of Booths. Okay, Khan? That's where as some of you might have heard even this so-called Jew talking about they're going to celebrate the Sakat. Okay, the Sakat, that word Sakat, of course, in that language, in Yiddish or whatever, is, is means booth. Khan? Means booth. But of course, in, in the Hebrew, the ancient Hebrew, the Paleo Hebrew, is Chag Ha Sawakwath, Feast of Booths. Kun? Uh. Feast of Booths. All right? Now you may say, okay, well, uh, where is Feast of Tabernacles come in? Tabernacle is the word that means tent. All right? So it's the same thing, booth or tent. Kun? Uh. All right? It means tent. Tabernacle means tent. Israel dwelt in tents coming out of Egypt for 40 years. Come? Come. And we dwelt in tents coming out of Egypt for 40 years. Of course, we didn't have no housing <laughs> dwelling in the wilderness, right? And of course, those tents were to protect us, of course, from the sun and from the rays of the sun and so forth in the wilderness. Come? Come. So uh, we were able to build those tents. So uh, when you look up the word tabernacle, it means, you know, tent or house. And uh, so that's where you get the, 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 the phrase Feast of Tabernacle. Or uh, more prominently known, Feast of uh, Booths. All right, and the Hebrew word is Kug Hawasak, uh, Kug Hawasak, uh, Hawasawakwath. All right, so it's C H A A G H A S A W A K W A T H. Well, the English letters, but that's how you would say it in Hebrew. Okay. Okay. You got it? Kun? Kun. 
Chag HaSawak Wath, Feast of Booths. All right, so that's that's what it represents, and that's what it's called. All right, then, uh, so why why is it so prominent, and why is it such a high, high holy day of the Mosai? Okay, well, when you read the scriptures, um, there were a lot of um, uh, different events that happened on the uh, Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, a lot of different events. Even when you read the scripture, the seven-year release of the Hebrew servants. A lot of times those were that happened during the Feast of Tabernacles. Come? Uh -huh. So a lot of different events happened on the Feast of Tabernacles. So that's why it's such a prominent day. Okay? Uh, so I'm gonna just read read something concerning the Feast of Tabernacles and um, what is the celebration and what does it commemorate and so forth, right? Then we're gonna go to Leviticus uh, 23rd chapter. Uh, it says, uh, the Most High required Israel to have a celebration to commemorate their wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. So this celebration also commemorates that, the Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Booth, uh, commemorates our wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. So this is why it's now a ceremonial law, a high holy day, a memorial, that we remember that we came out of Egypt for 40 years. Come? Come. And this is why we have these ceremonial laws. Um, then it says, well first, because remember, you understand, the Feast of Tabernacles really is like a, a two-part High Holy Day ceremonial law. Do you understand? We're celebrating not only the, the uh, us wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, but we're also celebrating the booths that the Mosai showed us to make uh, in the wilderness for 40 years, okay? Those, those somewhat makeshift tents. And those tents were strong. Mm -hmm. and, as, and as the brother had panned around earlier, you could see that we got the, had the willows, all right, and the, and the pine uh, branches, all right? So we put those booths together with those type of branches, and it was strong, okay? So it held out the elements uh, of, of the wind and rain and, 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 and so forth and the sun. So it was strong. So, but first, the first part um, is to commemorate the wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. All right? First, it's, it is a celebration of the end of harvest season or the end gathering. How about that? Okay? So it was a celebration of the end gathering. All right? Um, get this scripture for me, Yacht. Um Numbers... Uh, Let's see. No, Exodus 23:16. The celebration of the end gathering. Okay, the end of the year of all of your different crops. All right, that you had gathered out uh, during the year that you had grown during the year. Well, the Feast of Tabernacles celebrated the end of that, and it was called the end gathering. Okay. 16. Yeah, 20, no, uh, Exodus 23, 16. Read that. Exodus chapter 23, verse 16. And the feast of harvest, the first fruits of thy labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the, and the feast of ingathering. Okay, there you go. The feast of ingathering. So it's not only called uh, the feast of tabernacles or the feast of booths. It's also called the feast of ingathering. Why? Because at the end of the season, you gathered in all your labor, all right, all the fruits of the whole year, and you gathered it in because the winter season is about to come in. And you gather everything, so it's called the Feast of Ingathering. Go ahead, up. And the Feast of Ingathering, which is in the end of the year. See, at the end of the year, the Feast of Ingathering. Go ahead. When thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field. And when you gathered in your labors out of the field. So that the Feast of Tabernacles was a celebration of the Feast of Ingathering. Okay, come? And that, that was important. So that was, that's the first part of the feast, all right? Um, it was called the Feast of Ingathering. Then secondly, uh, it, is, uh, it was required by the Mosai to dwell in booths. 
See, so it's like a two-part feast. Come. Come. So you celebrate the feast of end gathering, and then you have to do the next part, which is to make up these booths, right, and dwell in these booths for seven days, all right, to commemorate uh, us coming out of Egypt, dwelling in booths for 40 years. So that so you, we had to do that. That was a ceremonial law, all right. And so um, get Leviticus 23. So we dwelt in booths made out of bows of trees and branches of palm trees to commemorate our dwelling in booths in the wilderness. All right. And so Leviticus 23, I think it's 33. 33. Go ahead, I'll read that. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 33. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of, of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Most High. Right. So now, I want you to jump to the booths part first, and then we go back to that, okay? So they can get some understanding. There's a, like a, a, like a two-part High Holy Day. Leviticus 23... And you jump down to the uh, booth part, which is uh, the 39th verse. Okay. Verse, uh, Leviticus 23, verse 39. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when ye have gathered in the fruit of the land, ye shall keep a feast unto the Most High seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the bowls of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the bowls of thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Most High your power seven days. All right. So you see the two, part, the two parts of the feast. So secondly, the Most High commanded us to build booths, or again, uh, tabernacles, or tents. Come. And we had to take these bows of goodly trees, of palm trees, and the bows of thick trees and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the, uh, the Most High uh, seven days. And so this is why when the brother earlier panned around, you see these uh, replicas of the, the willows and, and uh, brooks of trees. Uh, so we, we took these branches and made booths out of them. And these booths were very strong. They were very strong, okay? Because it kept out the rays of the sun. Remember, we were in the wilderness for 40 years. So um, every time the Mosai said we had to be on the move and, and get up and go, we tore that booth down, all right? Then when we moved into a certain area, we had to build another booth back up. So we got so good at it, <laughs> we, experienced, we were experienced at it, you know, in doing it because we were in the wilderness for 40 years. So building a booth should be no problem for us, right? Uh -huh. Building a tabernacle, a tent, would be no problem for us. Okay, especially coming out of uh, Egypt in the wilderness for 40 years. So, and we want to move. We want to move a lot. Just dwelling in the wilderness, we want to move. So we had to build these booths. Okay, because you're not going to build no housing, right? Because you want to move too much. All right, so the Mosai commanded us to do that. And, um, and what did the Mosai say? Now, the Feast of Tabernacles begins on a what day? The 15th day of the seventh month. Mm -hmm. Come, the 15th day of the seventh month. Come? Come. And as you know, on the 15th day of the seventh month, there is a full moon. Come. Okay. It has, to, it has to fall on the full moon, which is the bright moon. Come? Come. All right. It has to fall. Same thing with the Passover. The Passover falls on the 14th day at sundown the first month. Come. Come. All right. So it's going to be a full moon, especially on those two high holy days. Come. Come. All right. Because that's like the middle of the month. All right. And on the middle of the month, you will have um, uh, your moon should be fully bright, fully full. Okay, Khan? So uh, the brothers went to uh, Israel and uh, sent back a video and, and it showed uh, the day the Feast of uh, Tabernacles came on that Wednesday. Uh, he showed the full moon. And so he sent it back to us. Okay? 
And so it, it, it's a full moon. If it's not, if it's not a full moon, then maybe the calculation is wrong. Okay. Good. All right. So um, on the seventh month, the fifteenth day of the month, and it said what the first day of the Sabbath, right, and the last day of the Sabbath. So now you're going to go back up to the thirty-third verse and read that. Leviticus chapter twenty-three, verse thirty-three. And the Most High spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Most High. On the first day shall be an holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High. On the eighth day shall be an holy convocation unto you. Then ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High. Right. So on the eighth day should be a holy convocation. So seven days you celebrate. All right. First day is a high holy day. And it's a Shabbat. Come. And you do no servile work on the first day. And then uh, when you realize concerning the Feast of Tabernacles and the Feast of the Most High, high holy days, uh, when you read the history, there was always uh, different sacrifices happening. Always. I mean, we're talking about uh, we're talking about lambs, goats, oxen, different sacrifices. The um, high priest and the priests were offering to the Most High. So the priests were were busy in offering a uh, sacrifice to the Most High. So it's not not just a feast, but it was also you're offering offerings to the Most High. And those were required offerings, okay? Those were required, okay? So, um, uh, continue with that, up. Uh. Can I say this for you? Yeah. I'm not sure you, the priest, like James Brown said, was the hardest working man in Israel. Israel. <laughs> that's, why, that's why we have to support them. Support them, right. They ain't gonna have no other job but that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They were the hardest working man, 24-7, yeah. man. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, your offerings and your tithes went to the priests. Uh, and they deserved it too. Yeah. Uh, they deserved it. Uh, that, that's, that's a that's a lot of work, man. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of work, and, and we're talking about when the high holy days come and all these different sacrifices. Remember, it wasn't just the first day they offered up sacrifice. Remember, the whole seven days, the eight days, there were sacrifices. So I'll be expecting that cash. Yeah. <laughs> How about that? They had to clean. They had to clean it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of work, man. Yeah. We, uh, I mean, we're gonna go to numbers, and the numbers that tell you different sacrifices for each day. That's a lot of work, man. That's a lot of work. They, they, they really, they really earned that job. Um, uh, you know, and, and the priests of the Most High, and. Um, to really fully put themselves in that duty, uh, you had to be, you had to be separated from from the rest of the tribes. You had to be separated. That had to be your only job. Mm -hmm. Understand? You couldn't do anything else but that because it was it was a full full day's work. It was a full. It was full. You know what I'm saying so. And then on top of that, the sins of Israel and they come with their with their uh, you know offerings because of their sins. That's on top of that. Now, you think if Israel didn't sin, they were pretty much then that would that would lessen the load, wouldn't it? But oh, yeah. with Israel, it wasn't like that. Huh? Was, they added the work. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's the whole package in itself. Yeah. <laughs> right. So. Um, yeah, so, very good, Ock. Right. Go ahead and read on. Verse 37. These are the feasts of the Most High, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day. Beside the, de the Sabbaths of the Most High, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Most High. Right, there you go. So now get Deuteronomy 16, 16, right? Deuteronomy 16, 16. So, um, again, the Feast of Tabernacles uh, was a prominent high holy day of the Most High. And um, the Most High here in Deuteronomy 16, 16 is going to tell you about the three high holy days that we go up to Jerusalem for. And the Feast of Tabernacles is one of them. Read that up. 
Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Most High thy power. See, three times in a year shall the males appear before the Most High thy power. Now, you, we have more than just three high holy days, right? Come. 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 But the Most High specifically is going to give three that we are definitely supposed to appear and go up to Jerusalem, Mount Zion, the temple, and appear before the Most High. All right? The other high holy days, yeah, you you are going to represent yourself before the Most High, but you don't have to go up to Jerusalem necessarily for those high holy days. Come. Come. But these three, you definitely have to. It was required. Okay? Go ahead, up. In the place which he shall choose. And in the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The, the reason why he's saying the place he shall choose is because we're not in the land of Canaan yet. We're still in the wilderness here. So he's letting, letting Moses uh, is letting the people know when we get there, the place the Mosai chooses, then you're going to do this. You're going to appear before the Mosai uh, three times in a year, the males before, before the Mosai on these specific high holy days. Go ahead up. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Say the Feast of Unleavened Bread, okay, which is the Passover. Come. Come. You're supposed to make your way up to Jerusalem. Doesn't matter where you're at in the earth. I don't care if you're, at the, if you're on the moon, take a flight back and, and on the Passover and come back and celebrate the Passover. You know, that's what the Most High is saying. So this, it could be hundreds of miles away, but you're supposed to get there. This is what the Most High is saying. It's, it's a requirement. Go ahead, up. And in the Feast of Weeks. The, yeah, the, the day of Pentecost, the first fruits. Come. Come. You're supposed to find your way to Mount Zion, to the temple. Find your way there. You can be 100 miles away. You've got to take a boat or whatever. Get there. Okay, come. Go ahead, up. Right. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. In the Feast of Tabernacles. So there you go. The, the Feast of Tabernacles was one of those prominent high holy days the Most High required us to get to Jerusalem. To get there and celebrate it. All right, and, and as always, we're going to go into the New Testament and show you that the Feast of Tabernacles was celebrated even in, in Yahweh I celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. Huh? Mm -hmm. Yahweh I celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. All right, come. All right. So, so remember, we go from the Old Testament, we go and we bridge that gap with the New Testament to bring it all together. See? Because a lot of people think, well, uh, we ain't got to keep no ceremonial laws and all that, so why do Yahweh I keep it then? Mm -hmm. See? Why do he say, I destroyed not uh, uh, the laws or what the prophets wrote? Mm. I came to fulfill those commandments. And he, we know he celebrated the Passover. Understand? So he celebrated High Holy Days. So um, we're going to show you that also. So was that it? Go ahead. Go ahead up. And they shall not appear before the Most High empty. Yeah, don't appear before the Most High empty. So the Most High teaches us always, always uh, come with some kind of free will offering. To the high holy day, all right. Don't appear before the Most High empty. If it's if it's uh, tithes, if it's uh, you know resources, monies, whatever, or you know goats, lambs, oxen, <laughs> whatever you can give, right? Okay, yeah. You don't have that now, so what's the next best thing you could give? Understand? It could be yeah. It could be it could be money, but I'm just saying the next best thing that you could give. Understand? Come. Come. And this is what the Most High is asking us. And remember, the scripture says, rehearse the righteous acts. Yeah. Okay, come. Yeah. So, yeah, we know we're in Yahweh Shai. We know Yahweh Shai was that uh, ultimate sacrifice, and we don't offer up, you know, uh, meat offerings anymore, you know, animal sacrifices. But still, we're rehearsing these righteous acts. Don't you know that these, these sacrifices are going to take place uh, once, once we're redeemed in Yahweh Shai and the salvation of Israel? Huh. All these, all this is coming back. Even the sacrifices, it's all coming back. Come, it's all coming back. Okay, that's why the Most High tell you. But the sons of Aaron, Zadok, sons of Zadok, they're all coming back, and they're going to be in their courses. They're going to be in their uh, rightful positions mm -hmm. as the priests, and they're going to be doing these uh, offerings again. All right. So. Uh, that's important. So that's why the most I said rehearse. So we can only rehearse for certain things on this side of our captivity. But once we get back over there, we're going to rehearse it more completely. Come. Okay, go ahead. Up. 
Verse 17. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of Yahweh thy power, which he hath given him. Right. Given so him. how did the most I bless you? That's how you give. See? However the most I bless you, that's how you give. All right? Some brothers are more richer than others. And same thing back in ancient Israel. Some were more richer than others. Some had more cattle than others. Some had bigger housing, bigger, bigger farms, whatever. How the most I bless you. Understand? Mm -hmm. So uh, that's how you bring your, um, you know, your, your, your blessing. You bring it uh, up to Jerusalem at Mount Zion, the temple, and for, for, uh, uh, to give to the priests. And the priests used it for the work of the most High. Okay? So... Um, uh, that was it on that, right? Okay. And then uh, you're going to go to 1 Chronicles 5 and the first chapter. 1 Chronicles 5 and the first chapter. Oh, I should say too, I, I, yeah. not only for the priest, but for his family too. The, yeah, how about that? Right. Yeah. So the priest had a family, so I went to him and his family. Yeah, him and his family. Yeah. You were helping out his family too. Okay? But I mean, that was required. It wasn't that you were just giving it just to help him out, but that was required because the Most High didn't give the priest an inheritance or land anything, okay? The nation of Israel was the inheritance. That's why you, you gave your offering and everything to the priest, mm -hmm. and the priest used it uh, for the work of the Mosai and for his family. Yeah, uh, for his family, yeah. He had to support him so he could do his job. Do his yeah. job, right. Mm -hmm. so, so that's why we say, uh, don't do it, un, don't, don't give unwilling, don't have an unwilling spirit in, in, in giving or giving you a free will offering. Don't do it that way. Because the most I know your spirit. You do it, you do it begrudgingly. Like, uh, okay, I, I'd give him $10. I, I don't really want to. I mean, who he think he is? You know, something like that. You know, but you're going to give it anyway. But, uh, see? And then next thing you know, you got holes in your pockets. All your money's gone somewhere. So, you know, just do it with that free willing spirit. That spirit of love. Okay, now if the priests are wicked as hell and they take your, your offering and do wickedness with it, well that's on them, that's not on you. Uh, uh, you understand? Uh, you, gave it, you gave it in righteousness, mm -hmm. see? And in the spirit of, of love, okay? And especially really what you're doing, you're giving it because the Most High required you to do it. Uh, that's why you're doing it. Uh, okay, now if the priests, take, and, and when you read the history of the priests, it ultimately they became wicked as hell, weren't they? Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately. That's so, what um, doing right. And, and that's that's why the Most High punished us so 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 bad because the priests were wicked as hell. So, but once you give um, and you do it the free will offering, right, in the spirit of righteousness and spirit of love, because that's the work of the Most High. That's what the Most High wants to do. Once the priests take take that offering and do whatever they do with it, that's not on you. That's on them. So even the priests had to atone for their sins also. Mm -hmm. All right, they did not. They are not only atone for the sins of the whole nation, but atone for the sins of his own sins and his, and his own family. <coughs> See? So how about that. All right. So go ahead, I'll read that for us. First Chronicles chapter five verse one. Now the sons of Reuben, the firstborn of Israel, for he was the firstborn. Before as much as he defiled his father's bed. Did I say First Chronicles? Uh, you know what I meant. Second Chronicles. <laughs> Second Chronicles, I. Okay. Excuse me on that. Second Chronicles. Five and one. Go ahead, up. Second Chronicles, chapter five, verse one. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Most High was finished. Ah, here it is now. Solomon. Wisest. Greatest king of all Israel. Greatest lover. <laughs> and the greatest lover, right. <laughs> he was commissioned to build the house of the Most High. Actually, David, David had thought about doing it, right? To build the house of the Most High for the tabernacle and for the Ark of the Covenant, mm -hmm. right? And thought about doing it. And then the Most High came to him and said, nope. I'm uh, David. You, you, you're kind of bloody there. You got, you got blood everywhere, all over you. <laughs> blood is all over yourself. <laughs> David was a man of war. So he was a man of war. He said, most of no, too, your hands are too bloody. You can't build me a house. It had to be a man of, you know, peace. It had to be a man of, you know, uh, not so much blood on his hands. 
Even though Solomon did to get his get his throne, he had to get the order to kill a few people. Folk. You're not gonna do it. But your son, Solomon, I'm gonna commission him to build the house of the Most High. And so here it is. Uh, the spirit of the Most High is in Solomon to build the house of the Most High. And I'm gonna tell you that that temple, okay, uh, it was built on Mount Moriah, and that's again that's in Mount Zion. All right, in Israel and Jerusalem. All right, so so we were there. So we seen the area where that temple would have, you know, would, would right. be and would have been. And so, um, but that temple was elaborate, brother. Greatest greatest structure of all mankind. Right. There was nothing like it. Greatest structure of all mankind. All right. On this earth, that temple was probably the greatest structure ever. Mm. Okay, you're talking about with all the different gold and, 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 and silver and, and ivory and, and pearls and everything. Uh, the way it was made. All right. So it was a great structure. I read, read the Josephus, mm -hmm. how that thing was made, man. It was elaborate, brother. Okay. So you know the most I was in that. Okay, you know the most I was in it. In every corner, every nook and cranny, the most I was in it. Everything he was in that every most side every every you know even when they put the hammer to <laughs> to the stone or whatever when it really that was no it was hewn stone right so really you didn't need a hammer right I forgot about that how about that <laughs> they didn't need a hammer everything was put together piece by piece, piece by piece I forgot about that they didn't need a hammer right. That's right. I'm thinking about when Nehemiah and them were using hammers, but no, not when the, this temple was made. There was no hammers, brother. Everything was put together piece by piece. You know what I'm saying? The smooth stone and everything was put together. They didn't need a hammer, brother. It was elaborate, yeah. And precise with precision. Precise and precision, correct. I bought that. So you know the Mosai was in that. And so the Mosai had showed David, get all the materials ready, get everything ready. Okay, I'm talking about the wood, the stone. David had everything ready, but he wasn't going to build it. He had, had the to it. he had the blueprint to it. Solomon, yeah. yeah, he had the blueprint. How about that? All you do is hand it, hand it to Solomon. Solomon didn't really have to do anything, but go by the blueprint. It was already set up. How about that? And that's, you know what I'm saying? Getting the blueprint and all the materials, that's like uh, most of the work. Yeah. Because once you start the work, well, that's, I'm not going to say that's the easy part, but it's easy. But once you got to try to find all the materials and stuff, he didn't have to do that. It was already there. It was already there. And then if he do, did need more materials, he knew where to get it. Come. So uh, it was elaborate, man. Right. On a high level. That's, uh, that's, that's like the Mosai bringing down his throne into the earth. It was like on that level. Okay. Because, you know, that's where the Mosai going through. Mosai said he dwelt there, right? Yeah. And right after he built it, what happened? Right after he finished, the spirit of the Mosai came down in the cloud. Boom! Right on top. And the priests couldn't see. They were like, wait a minute. <laughs> they could, all of a sudden, they couldn't see. Because the spirit of the Mosai came right down. Especially once the ark was put in, put in place. Once the ark was put in place and everything, boom! The Mosai came and sat right there on top. Mm. Yeah. Right there, brother. <laughs> Most I was there. Boom. I'm here now. Yeah. yeah. Solomon knew it too, and everybody said, oh, oh, oh wait a minute. <laughs> 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 brother, you better stop what you're doing. <laughs> cool out, brother. You know what I'm saying? I see an idol in your back pocket. You better do something with it now. Yeah. I'm serious, because the Most High, boom, came right in there and sort of clutched onto the, to the Ark of the Covenant, and it was there. Boom. Yeah, and the priests all of a sudden couldn't see because, you know, the spirit of Mosiah came down. Yeah, and then it said all the people bowed down. <laughs> all Israel just, yeah, yeah, you better bow. <laughs> Scared the hell out of you. Better bow, brother. Yeah, especially if you see a sight like that. Yeah, who had the hand up? Yeah. Okay, so read that out. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. That's why your name is very important that you have because it's, Solomon, his name means peaceable. Peaceable, right. Mm -hmm. How about for the occasion that it was given for the occasion. For years of peace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. His name fit the, uh, the, the, the work that he was doing and everything at the most I wanted to do. 
His name was, uh, he was given that name for that purpose. Okay. All right. Peaceable. Yeah. Isn't that the longest time of peace we had? Yeah. Yeah. That was, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was the longest time. I would say from that time. Yeah. 40 years. She had a question? Is there scripture? Yeah. I'm reading, I'm going to read it now. <laughs> Go ahead. Second Chronicles chapter 5 verse 1. Thus all the work that Solomon made for the house of the Most High was finished. And Solomon brought in all the things that David his father had, had um, dedicated, and the silver and the gold and all the instruments put he among the treasures of the house of the Most High. Then Solomon assembled the elders of Israel and all the heads of the tribes, the chief of the fathers of the children of Israel, unto Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Covenant of the Most High out of the city of David, which is Zion. Right, which is Zion. How about that? Bring it up. Bring up the Ark of the Covenant, which is Zion. Okay, so remember that Ark of the Covenant, that's, the, that's one of the highest holy pieces of the Most High. Not everybody can touch it. Not everybody can look onto it. All right. Even David was afraid of it. All right. Even David was afraid of that Ark of the Covenant. You don't touch that thing. First-hand experience. <laughs> yeah, first-hand experience. All right. And, and the Ark of the Covenant was being brought, all right, to the city of David, and it and and it, was, it almost fell. And all the man did was try to keep it from sure. falling. Oh, Most I said, nope. <laughs> he was better off what? Letting it fall, wasn't he? Sure. Yeah. Sure. He's better off letting it fall. Let the let the priests or the ones who commissioned to touch it do it. Mm. Right? The Mosai knew his heart, but the Mosai was just showing Israel as an example. Okay. Yeah. And I think David understood that. Uh, but that's the Mosai. Mosai is true. So uh, David said, Whoa, what am uh, Mosai, what am I gonna do with this thing? I, I can't I can't touch it. Yeah. <laughs> right? So he had to bring it, uh, I think it was a, what, the um, um, um he had to bring it to the house. I think it was the house of uh, Ornan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the threshing floor of Ornan. All right, and to bring it there for a while, because David realized, what am I going to do with this thing? Okay, so, but again, it was there until, until it was uh, the temple was built, and so Solomon is now, uh, after finishing the temple, he's now going to bring the Ark of the Covenant to the house of the Mosai, because that's where the Mosai is at. That's where you, Mo, and Yahushai, Mosai and Yahushai is there. It's, he's there. <laughs> That's right. You dare not go in that any parts of the temple you don't belong. Because why? The angels were there, brother. See, even the Ark of the Covenant had the angels over it. Mm -hmm. right, right. With the wings. The angels are there, brother. Okay? Cherubim. That's right. They are there. They're in and around that place. And and that's why you got to believe that where two or three are gathered in Yahawashai, He's there. And the angels were there. Because the Mosai had to show Elisha that. Right? Show Elisha, Mosai, the angels. <laughs> we, it's just two of us, but show him that the battle is yours, Mosai. Show him and open up his eyes. And Elijah, Elisha, and, and Elijah prayed, and all of a sudden Elisha seen the angels all around with swords ready to kill. Think of the Mosai. Uh, take that veil off your eyes, and all of a sudden you've seen the angel about 20 feet tall with a sword in his hand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How about that? Mm. All right? With garments on. <laughs> they wear garments too. Right? With a sword in his hand. So, um, the angels are in the temple of the Mosai. Okay? Right. So, sure go so ahead. Too, right? yeah. That the Mosai deals with discipline and command. command. Military command style. Right. And he gives an order. It has to be carried it out. It has to be carried out. You know what I mean? Because his good will and good intention was right. good. But most I said, nobody's supposed to touch nobody's it. Nobody's supposed to touch it. You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> right. orders. Command. Right. Like coming straight down. Right. You know? So sometimes your good will be good if you don't act according to uh, the right the command. Uh, right. And command. Right. Isn't that something? He had good intentions, but the, also the Mosai had to show an example to all Israel. Good. So he had to show that example. It's just unfortunate that it had to be that brother who had good intentions. <laughs> uh, right? But that's how that's how it happens sometimes. Understand? So um, so David understood that, and David said, "Oh, no way, 
No way I'm bringing this thing into my house. <laughs> mm -mm. So, uh, but now is the time, this is what we read, now is the time that now Solomon is bringing up the ark. Go ahead, up. Oh. Yeah. Oh, well, I was saying, like, the, um, to show you how powerful the ark was when it was in the hand of the heathen, it was catching hell. It was catching hell, right? Yeah. yeah. Catching hell to the point they said, yeah. nah, we gotta give it back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They were catching pure hell. Huh? Mm -hmm. We're talking about diseases, everything. Mm -hmm. They were, couldn't eat, and there was no crops growing, mm -hmm. nothing. I mean, everything was happening, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. No real idols. Everything was happening, right? Go ahead, Ah. Second Chronicles chapter five, verse three. Wherefore all the men of Israel assembled themselves unto the king in the feast, which was in the seventh month. Yeah. See, so. Also, we want to stress the point that now is what month? The seventh month. Which is the seventh month begins what? It begins, uh, is a new moon, mm -hmm. and then it's the memorial blowing the trumpets come. Right. right? Then you're going to have the uh, uh, Day of Atonement, Day of Atonement, Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. right? Feast of Tabernacles, right? So there were a lot of events that happened when you read the history on, in the seventh month. A lot of events. Josiah had one too. Okay, in the seventh month. King Josiah. All right? So there were a lot of events. The year of release, the seventh month, when you read the scriptures. Okay? So a lot of events. That's why the Feast of Tabernacles is one of those prominent high holy days. We know the Passover is, but the Feast of Tabernacles is on that level too, just as well beyond that level of, as Passover. Okay, yeah. And a, a lot of events is happening in the East, so too. Yeah. You know, How about that? Okay. In. All right. And now, uh, you read the third verse? Come. Okay. Bro, can I say yeah. that too? Because my title has stressed it too. But that shows you too that we were like, uh, everything was family oriented around us. Right. So we work for all family members of the 12th tribe of Israel. We didn't work for an outside nation. We right. We worked in a, a lot of eight to four, seven to right. three hours. We worked <laughs> ourselves amongst us. Us. Right. 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 Sovereign people. Sovereign people. Right. So when that time came to do our own thing, to hell with it. We They're, off. We're, we're off. not working for nobody. Right. right. You know what I mean? That was a good thing about it. Right. All family oriented around, yeah. around the 12th tribes of Israel. Right. You can't keep these high holy days now the way we did in ancient time. Mm -hmm. Again, it was just Israel, and, and we worshiped the Most High. It was just us, the nation. That was it. Other nations, you know what I'm saying? Like the scripture says, the Most High separated us from other nations, and we worshiped the Most High. And that's how the Most High likes it, brother. That's, how, that's why I said, don't marry them, don't do it. Understand? Don't bring them in. He told Joshua, if you don't get rid of these nations, they're going to be a thorn in your, your ass. You know what I'm saying? A thorn in your side. Yeah, don't bring them in. Mm -hmm. So we didn't get rid of all of them. Remember, there was a few right. nations left. Right. The Canaanites, there was a few of them left. We didn't get rid of them. They ended up being thorns, mm -hmm. right? So, um, but uh, again, these major, major high holy days, they were like events too, man. They mm -hmm. were like events. The worship of the most high were events. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I'm going to tell you, and, and I'm going to tell you, uh, we know the first day is a high holy day and the last day, but... We the event went the whole whole seven days, eight days. Mm -hmm. We party. <laughs> See? And you know, and like brothers talk about dancing and all that. Dancing is, you know. No, we dance, brother. Mm -hmm. yeah. Israel, what we're, we're dancers. Mm -hmm. We're musicians. Right. And we're singers. Right. We did all of that. All of that. <laughs> Understand? We did all that before the Mosai. Okay? Uh, I can see the first day and the last day because it's Shabbat. You understand? But the the whole seven, eight days, we did everything, brother. We ate. It was a whole entire feast. You know what I'm saying? And you had your you, you had your wives, your children, everybody's out there. Yeah, a lot of love, love making. A lot of love, everything. <laughs> right. At the booth, though. Yeah, you had everything, brother. That's how, it's, so, so the Passover, yeah, the first day, high holy day, but the whole seven days, it was a joyous occasion, brother. You mm -hmm. sang, you danced, you did everything. It was a, like a party. Drink, be merry. Drink, be merry. It was like a party, brother. We had a party. That's why I said be a Sabbath. Where the party at? <laughs> it was the high holy day. Right, right, the party right, was right. the high holy day. Right, right. Understand? Mm -hmm. You didn't have to do no separate 
wicked party down the block in your house in the basement with strobe lights and all that. You know what I'm saying? No, the party was the high holy day. Come. So, so we got to understand that. And that was the third verse, right up? Okay, and then you're going to go to Second Chronicles 7, chapter, from uh, first verse. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven. See? And so Solomon, once everything was done, Solomon prayed before the Mosiah and to all the people. All right? Remember, he assembled the elders. When he assembles the elders from each tribe, who do you think came to the celebration? Everybody, brother. All Israel came, everybody. You're talking about, you know, thousands, not millions of our people, everybody came. Okay? Okay, go ahead, Al. Um, Real quick, yeah, go ahead. for everybody, read that prayer. Pro yeah, Solomon yeah. prophesied in that prayer, and it was powerful, the whole sixth mm -hmm. chapter. Read that when y'all get a chance. But, um, I'm going to go mm -hmm. ahead. It's a really good prayer. Which, um, verse 7, um, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 1. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Most High filled the house. Yeah, see? So th there you go. So the, the Most High came from heaven and what? No sort of ate up the sacrifice. Most High eats too. Says Yahweh Shai was a gluttonous and a wine bibber. So the Most High, Most High liked to eat too. He likes the fat, brother. <laughs> the fat. He likes the fat, brother. He likes he likes the best. The lamb, the oxen, the most I likes the best. The most I came and boom, like lightning. On the altar, like lightning, ate it up. Cause when you have when you have lamb before you, what's the first thing you do? You eat that thing up. You ever see how a lion eats? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eat that thing. That's how the most I eats. Ate it up, brother. And then the glory of the most I came and filled the whole house. How about that? Spirit of the Most High. Go ahead, up. Verse 2. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Most High. See, they couldn't enter into it. Why? Go ahead. Because the glory of the Most High had filled the Most High's house. Now, how about that? Just that quick. It just finished. <laughs> <laughs> the Most High said, you're taking too long. <laughs> In other words, I want to sit on my throne. <laughs> Think about that, huh? Because <laughs> yeah. remember, remember that... That temple was made an example how the heavenly temple was made. You know that, right? Yeah. The heavenly temple was made in that fashion. In that fashion, okay. You're right. In that same way. That's why everything was done, like you said, to the letter, to the to the letter. And the most I didn't want no hammers, he didn't want no nails. Everything was done just right. right. And so because why? The Mashiach. And gonna sit on that throne, right? Good. Most I gonna sit on the throne, and so the glory of the house filled it. Mm. And now, the spirit of the Most High is there. So, just like uh, we know, uh, other parts of the history we tell you, Mount Zion, of course, in that area, in the city of David, all right, Mount Moriah. That's where the spirit of the Most High. That's the center. Scripture says the center of the earth. That's the holy of holies. For the Most High in this earth, Mount Zion. That temple was the Holy of Holies. And you know, when that one high priest went into that room where the Ark, where the Ark was, Ark of the Covenant, he was the only one able to go in there. Even the other priests couldn't go in there. Because why? The Most High is there. <laughs> the Most High is there, brother. So it, you had to respect. You had to respect that temple and, and also the outer courts of the temple. You had to respect that too. Because the angels are all around it and everything, everything is there. The spirit of the Most High is right there. Okay, go ahead, up. Verse 3. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Most High upon the house, they bow themselves with their face to the ground. Yeah, so what are you going to do? You see that? You see that lightning come down and eat up the eat up the rams and the goats and all of, uh, you know, what's on offered at the altar. And you see that lightning come down and eat that thing up like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna fall flat on your face, brother. 
you know, you got, you know, Israel, Israel did it out of fear. I'm, I'm telling you, I would have been like, oh, oh, wait a minute, man. I'm not going, you didn't, you didn't move an inch. You said right, right there. Yeah. It was, it was like, what, yeah. And what proves that to Barack? When they lighten the thunders really hard, what people do? Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> most of the talking. Hey, yeah. Oh, yeah. everybody give respect yeah. right here, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, wait a minute, man. What was that? You know, the first thing is, what was that? Because Mosai cracks through that, through that, through the heavens. He cracks through the heavens, brother. Mm. And that, and that, that voice is, is, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It, it commands attention, doesn't it? Right. And you stop what you're doing immediately, don't you? Mm -hmm. You say, let me go in the house. You tiptoe. <laughs> Why are you tiptoeing? <laughs> you tiptoeing like, you know, like you don't want the most eye to hear you. you know, the most eye hear you. You start tiptoeing and you start because you, it's just that the presence is like, it's just awesome. You, right. you can't get around it, man. Right. And you sit in your house and you're quiet like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Man. My mother, got my house said, when you hear that, you turn that TV off. <laughs> yeah. You keep quiet. You turn everything off. Yeah. Man, yeah. yeah, just keep quiet. Yeah. Like you're outside on the tree, you be running. Yeah, you start running. Yeah. Uh, one of the college football games, I think it was last week, I think it was Michigan. It was Michigan, I think they were playing somebody else. And you know, those stadiums could fit 80,000 people. Good. It was thunder and lightning. Did they have a game? Nope. <laughs> they got the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> yeah, it was last week. You can look it up, they got the hell out of Dodge. It was thunder and lightning, they said, nope, no game. Cancel the game. Yeah, you get the hell out of Dodge, brother, with the most I can come around. <laughs> you, you, you gonna play a football game? <laughs> and and Mo, you know, it's like, wait a minute, most I gotta score this touchdown. Give me one second. No, brother. No, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna honor the most high. So, so that's what. But remember, the most high, that president of the most high was with Yasha, was with mm -hmm. Israel. Mm -hmm. No other nation. That's right. Yeah, they only heard of the fame. They only heard of what. Understand? Mm -hmm. That the Most High was with this this nation. That's where all the jealousy and all that come in. See, they heard of it, but they weren't around to see it. See, so we were able as a people to see that. No other nation was able to see that. See, so uh, so Solomon prayed, and all this all this started happening. And immediately, the spirit of Most High came in that temple. Go ahead, up. Finishing verse three, with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worship. And praise the Most High, saying, "For He is good; for He is mer his, for His mercy endure forever." Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before Yahweh, and King Solomon offered the sacrifice of twenty and two thousand oxen. How about that? <clears throat> were the priests busy? <laughs> what, what were you going to do? Uh, twenty-two. Was it twenty-two thousand? Twenty and two thousand. Come on. How about that? That's a lot. <laughs> what are you going to do with all that, huh? Mm -hmm. uh, are we ready as a people to deal with all that? We're not ready yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, we're, not, we're not together. We're not ready yet. Uh, as a nation, we're not ready for that. As a, this is on a high level. This is, this is how you really worship and praise the Most High. Uh, you know what I'm saying? With that many oxen, huh? You were there all day long, huh? Okay? All day long we were there. That's a, that's a high level. See? Go ahead, up. And in 120,000 sheep. Uh, wait, wait a minute. 100? 100 or 100,000? 120,000 sheep. That's a lot of sheep. I'm sure the most I had to bless them in abundance. Abundance, yeah. All that livestock. Well, that livestock, yeah. Yeah. That's a lot, all right? And you're offering it to the most high. So can the most I eat? Okay, most I can eat. So, um, but this just shows you the level that uh, how you know level that we're on and how far that we fell. We can't even offer. We don't know how to offer up one goat, one little one little he lamb. Do you know how to do it? No, I don't. We don't know how to do that. But we're gonna come back to that. No, we're coming back to that. Yeah, go ahead. Up. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of the Most High. And the priests waited on their offices. The Levites also with instruments of music the of the music Most High. Music was played. See? Mm -hmm. Music was played. So aren't we a musical people? 
Yeah. Esau knows that. He read the scriptures. He know we're musical people. Well, he's sing a song. Yeah. Yeah. He knows we can sing. He knows we can put melody together. He can, we can put lyrics together. That's the type of people we are. But we did it for the most side. We didn't do it for other nations. But when we're in captivity, other nations said, sing me one of those Zion songs, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They forced you to sing. Because the spirit of the most side is in you. That melody is, is, is just something about that melody, man. You know what I'm saying? When you sing and the way it comes out, everybody wants to hear that. Everybody wants to hear it, man. Other nations, they desire to hear it. Okay? They hate you, but they love you. <laughs> they love to hate you. They love you. They hate you, but they love you because you are the spirit of most eyes with you. So go ahead, up. Which David the king had made to praise Yahweh. Remember, David was a musician. Wasn't he? Mm -hmm. And he said, and he said, uh, he made music to praise the Most High. So David, David had an orchestra in the temple, brother. Mm -hmm. See, you talking about you know an orchestra? Mm -hmm. David had an orchestra of thousands of Levites, singers, musicians, everything, thousands. See, today you see an orchestra, you may get maybe a hundred of people, you know, playing different instruments. No, David had thousands. Imagine the sound of that. Yeah, imagine the sound of that going to the Most High. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Understand? Yeah. And they're all praising the Most High. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about instruments, David had harps, everything in the orchestra, man. Percussion, horn, instrument, they had everything. Too much thousands of brothers, Levites, and so were singing to the Most High. Understand? Go ahead, up. Because his mercy endureth forever. Mercy endureth forever. Go ahead. When David praised by their ministry, and the priests sounded trumpets before them, and all Israel stood. All Israel stood, see? And the priests sounded trumpets. Remember, these weren't just no regular little, you know, you know, ram's horn. You're talking about thousands of priests blowing trumpets, brother. You know what that sounded like? Wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Bro, yeah. I tell you too, when you look at a lot of musicians that play uh, instruments, the majority of them either play a trumpet. Trumpet, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Because that, that spirit is still in you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That spirit is still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understand? So, uh, and, and we are the best writers of music. Good. Okay. Good. And then best singers. So David had all that. He got all that prepared. But he, but David had it himself anyway. But he got all that prepared for Solomon to build the temple. Go ahead, up. Verse 7. Moreover, Solomon hollowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Most High. For there he offered burnt offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. Because the brazen altar which Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offerings. Then the meat offerings and the fat. Right, because, you know something, it still wasn't entirely complete. So you can understand. It wasn't entirely complete, even though they had the Feast of Tabernacles and the celebration, but it wasn't entirely complete. That's what they're saying. That's what it's saying here. Okay, go ahead, up. Verse, verse 8. Also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days. Kept what feast? Seven days. It's the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay, come. It's the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days. At the same time. Okay. Go ahead, up. And all Israel with him. A very great congregation. You said all, right? You talking about? What are you talking about? Thousands, if not millions, of people come with him. Go ahead, up. From the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt. How about that? Wow. Unto the river of Egypt. Okay. And there's a, ri there's a river that leads from uh, Israel and goes down into this, uh, I think it's the Sinai Peninsula, mm -hmm. going towards to Egypt. That's the river of Egypt. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, that's a lot. That's, that's, a, that's a vast amount of people in one area, right? Vast amount of people from Hamath to the river of Egypt. Vast amount of people, okay? From where Mount Zion is, where the temple uh, was, all the way onto the river of Egypt. Yeah, that's from the north, up, up to Syria, yeah. down to Egypt. Down to Egypt. That's a lot of square miles of land. A lot of square miles of land. 
So you're talking about thousands of priests when they blow their horn with the people who are way down there got to hear it, right? <laughs> they got to hear it. How about that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That's on a high level. Remember, because the Spirit of Most High is there. So remember, when Israel, it went up, the vibration went up into the spiritual world. Mm -hmm. See? You don't think the other nations are hearing this? <laughs> they trembled, brothers. And they knew, they said, the Spirit of the Most High must be down in the temple. The Most High is there. That's what they say, the Most High is there. <laughs> Go ahead, up. Verse 9. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly. For they kept the dedication of the altar seven days. Right. Why? Because uh, you have the first days of high, you know, high holy days, Shabbat, and you keep the celebration of seven days. But the eighth day, right, is another high holy day, Shabbat. Come. Go ahead up. And the feast seven days. And the feast seven days. Go ahead. And on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month. Why? Be, why on the three and twentieth day? Because Feast of Tabernacles falls on what? 15th day of the seventh month, and it goes what? To the 22nd day of the seventh month. So here it is saying on the 23rd day, meaning after the eighth day, on the 23rd day, go ahead up. Of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents. And he sent the people away because why? The Feast of Tabernacles is over now. It's over. Okay? Yeah. It's over now. Okay, and everybody goes back into their houses and tents. Go ahead up. Glad and merry in heart for the goodness that the Most High has showed unto David and to Solomon right. and to Israel his people. And to mm. Israel's people. How about that? Very good. Okay, now get Nehemiah 8 and 1. Nehemiah 8 and 1. And when you read this, uh, the book of Jubilees, Zaquan, in the book of Jubilees, right? Well, it tells you how, okay, it tells you how uh, Abraham celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles, right? He dwelt in booths too. And, and, it's, and it's, it'll tell you uh, here in this, in this book on page 116, um, uh, it says, uh, page 116, it says, And he built there an altar to Yahweh who had delivered him and who was making him rejoice in the land of his uh, soul journey. And he celebrated a festival of joy. Right? In this, in, the, in this month, seven days, near the altar which he had built at the well of the oath. And he built booths for himself, okay, and for his servants on this festival. And he was the first to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles on the earth. Mm. Talking about Abraham. Okay, let's talk about Abraham, okay. And during these seven days, he brought each day to the altar a burnt offering. So he was offering up the sacrifices that were... Uh, customarily supposed to be brought to the Mosaic. And it tells you two oxen, two rams, and, and the different uh, 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 offerings he was supposed to bring up. And Abraham did that. Then it says, um, and, and we blessed him forever and all his seed after him throughout all the generations of the earth because he celebrated this festival in its season, okay, according to the testimony of the heavenly tables, Okay, what was written, all right? Because he, what was written, how he's supposed to perform the high holy days and so forth. Well, Abraham had that. He had it in what? The heavenly tables. And he gets those heavenly tables from, it was passed down from Noah, okay? From Adam, all it passed down. Now Abraham had it, right? For this reason, it is ordained on the heavenly tables concerning Israel, that they shall celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles seven days with joy and in the seventh month acceptable before the Mosai, a statue forever throughout their generations every year. 
That's in the book of Jubilees. Abraham celebrated the Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> and you thought that the High Holy Days only came after we came out of Egypt and the Most High gave us the ceremonial laws. No. They all had it. Noah had it. They all had it, brother. Okay? They all knew the High Holy Days. Enoch knew it too. Shem, Methuselah, they all had it. All we coming from Adam. They all had it. Come. Uh -huh. Tell them where you at, up. Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Most High had commanded to Israel. And Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. Right, he brought, the, he brought all the congregation be, in, before the temple, and all that could hear with understanding. You're talking again, you're talking about thousands of people. Now this is after uh, the people are coming back from the Babylonian captivity. Come, uh -huh. they're all coming back now. All right? Now the ones who were able to come back and come back into the land were the ones who had their, their uh, let's say, sort of like a birth certificate type of thing. They needed their papers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. they, you needed your papers. They wasn't allowing anybody in without those papers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ezra, Zerubbabel, and them, they wouldn't let nobody in without those papers, man. All right? Because they had to find out if you were a true Israelite. Mm -hmm. Okay, now these days, of course, we're not going to need papers. The most has already, already knows who, you know, who's Israelite, who's not. But back then, you know, those papers. And then those, 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 uh, those children you had by, you know, wives of other nations and, and husbands of other nations, must have to get rid of them. That's what i to get rid of them. They can't come in. How about that, huh? This is your son and stuff, you know, you can't come in it. I mean, they'll stay on the outside and, and raise them up and so forth. Yeah. That's what the scriptures teach us, right? See? So, uh, the most I, these days, the most I say, he's going to sift Israel like you sift corn in a sieve. One from a family, two from every city, one by one, Mosiah is bringing to Zion. That's what he said, right? One by one. Mosiah raised up Israel one by one. <laughs> How about that? Because uh, the Mosiah know the very hair of your heads, right? So raising up Israel one by one, that's nothing for the Mosiah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You might be, you're the one in your family. Understand? It could be in another family, it could be like the sister or one woman. Most I, that's who the most I want. You don't want nobody. Understand? It could be you don't you don't know who the most I choose. But here, Ezra said you had to have those papers, and you didn't have those papers, you wasn't coming in. Come? Uh -huh. So yeah. So now here uh, the walls, the walls of uh, remember Nehemiah got the walls repaired and everything. Got the walls repaired. The temple wasn't fully uh, prepared or, or rebuilt yet, but they still now, they got the walls, so now they're bringing everybody back from the Babylonian captivity. And so now they're saying you gotta have your papers to come in. And so by, by this time, you got, of course, thousands and thousands of people there now. And so now the Most High commissioned Ezra to uh, teach the law before the people. And, and, and by the temple, where the temple was, and stand before the people and teach the commandments, laws and statutes. Okay, go ahead, up. Upon the first day of the seventh month. What month was it? The seventh month. Go ahead. Verse 3. What's, what comes on the first day of the seventh month? What high holy day? Trumpets. Memorial blowing the trumpets. So here we are, the memorial blowing the trumpets now. Ezra is comm commissioned for all the people to come before before the Mosai by the temple. Okay, go ahead, up. Verse 3, And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday. How about that? What's the morning? Huh? The morning is pretty much... About, no, about 6, right? First hour of the day is about 6 o'clock. Okay. Midday, you figure about... About 12? Mm -hmm. So how many hours is that? Six, six hours. hours. <laughs> he read the law for six hours. Mm -hmm. 
He read the law for six hours. And some of you can't last two hours in here. You start complaining, sh being shiftless, you know what I'm saying? Fidgety, sleeping. You can't last two hours. Well, what about six? Okay, so how about that? Oh, that's coming back too. There's going to come a time when we're in the wilderness where we're going to read the law for six hours, maybe even more, whole day. And there's nowhere you could go. <laughs> Hold up, brother, I got a phone call. No. I got to watch the game. I'm coming back, though. Mm. It's not going to be there. I'm going to go around the block. I got to drive somewhere. Huh? No cars. No bicycles. No nothing. No skateboards. We had a brother with a skateboard. Nothing, none of that stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be right there for hours upon hours. All the laws are going to be read to you. Mm. See, that's how the most I really does it. Mm. See? Now, you you all distracted. You right, got, you're right. thinking about this and that. The woman, you know, your brother reading the law to you, thinking about the woman didn't want to kiss you and all that stuff. <laughs> Come on, go ahead up. No, no, you, you did it. <laughs> <laughs> you're all distracted, right? Too many distractions. Most I got to take it away. See? All right, go ahead, huh? Before the men and the women, and those that could understand. Yeah, before the men and the women, right? And those that could understand. So the children were there too, but those that could understand. So go ahead, up. Huh? And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. See, they were attentive to the book of the law. See, the commandments. All right, law, statutes, and commandments. See, understand? And remember, they had the tables there with them too. They had the books there too. We got the books here, they had the books there too. Okay, yeah, they didn't have the New Testament, we know that. But they had the books that they were supposed to have there. Understand? Okay, so go ahead, huh? Verse 4, And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. How about that, huh? Uh-huh. Pulpit of wood. So here's where you get the preacher in the pulpit. Mm -hmm. That's where they get it from. But Ezra is the real preacher. Understand? Mm -hmm. The real prophet. Not these pork job beaten prophets. Mm -hmm. Or pastors or reverends or whatever you want to call them. But he stood on a high, and it wasn't no, you know, two foot thing. He stood on a high pulpit. Uh, mm -hmm. Understand? <laughs> it was high up there. Okay? It might even give the cubits how, how big it was, but it was high. It wasn't no little three-foot thing. I, no. Mm. It, not if you're standing before thousands and thousands of people, yeah. if not millions of people. They all got to see you. Right, they all got to see you. So it was high up there. Okay, go ahead, up. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him stood Mattathiah uh -huh. and Shema uh -huh. and Aniah. Uh -huh. And Uriah and Raj, Uriah. So why do you think when we go out there to speak, we have a reader next to us? Because uh -huh. Ezra did the same thing. Uh -huh. He had a whole bunch. Right. And he had he had more than one reader. You know, you got some brothers that need two readers. Mm -hmm. But this is where we get that. It's the same spirit. Same spirit that Ezra, the most I put on Ezra, to have these readers reading for him. Would you think Ezra was reading? Ezra wasn't reading. The men next to him were reading. Ezra was given what? Instruction. The instruction, the sense of the law that he was bringing out. So if he was bringing out the, the law on the Shabbat, read, brother. Don't we say that? <laughs> read, uh, read, brother. And this is what the Mosai teaches us. And then you go on and get the sense. It's the same deal, brother. All that's coming back. Understand? Go ahead, up. And Hilkiah and Messiah on his right hand and on his left hand. How about that? Right hand <laughs> first. Go ahead. Padiah and Mishael and Melchiah and Melchiah and Hashem and Hashbadana, mm -hmm. Zechariah and Meshalam. Okay. Uh, did you go to the fourth verse? Yeah, that was the fourth. That was fourth. Verse. Now go to the fifth verse mm -hmm. and just read. Verse five. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people. He opened the Bible in sight of all the people, right? Opened the Bible in sight of all the people. They, 
See him opening the book. Go ahead. For he was above all the people. And he's above all the people, right? Mm -hmm. So he's really up there. He's above all those people. He's up there. Go ahead, Doc. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Most High, the great power. And all the people answered, Amen. 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 How about that? So we're coming back to that. So isn't that how we're supposed to be when the Bible's being opened now? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're supposed to respect it, brother. Mm -hmm. Our people don't respect it no more. It's, it's on their shelf getting dusty. They don't respect it no more. See? You know, Ezra didn't say anything. He just opened the book. Mm. And the people understood once that book is open, that's the most high. I better shut up. I better be quiet. He didn't have to say a word. The book's open. <laughs> so the spirit of the most high is in this book, brother. See? When you open this book, the spirit of the most high is there. It's there. Understand? So we got to understand that. All right? Go ahead, up. With lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads, and worshiped the Most High with their faces to the ground. Right. How about that? See, that's how you're supposed to worship the Most High, with your face towards the ground. Now, I know we stand and pray, but also your face should be towards the ground, too. Even when you're standing, and your face should be towards the ground. How about that? See? Go ahead, up. Also, Jeshua and Bani... And Sherebiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatiah, uh, Had Hodijah, Messiah, Kalida, Azara, Jezebel, Hanan, Peliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. How about that, right? So, so they caused the people, men had to give, give sense to it. So when you're reading the scriptures, you have to give sense. So when you're out there speaking, you have to give understanding to it. Mm -hmm. If you don't give understanding, you're like, you're like words, just rhetoric to them. All right? You have to give the people, that's why the most I say, get knowledge, get wisdom, but above all, get understanding. What are you telling me, brother? I'm an Israelite. What does that mean? <laughs> now you got to explain it to them. No. How do you begin to explain it to them? See? <laughs> well, you go, the scriptures say... Mm -hmm. Such and such. You go in the Bible, right? So, again, you have to get the sense. Right? So that's why studying to show that self approved. Mm -hmm. Alright? Go ahead, up. And the people stood in their place. Uh, you reading the A first? About to now. Okay, go ahead. Verse 8. So they read in the book of the law of the Most High distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. Yeah, made them understand it. <clears throat> Made them understand. Okay, gave them the sense. Do you think there's, oh, there's thousands of people out there? You think anybody had a question? No, no, no. You can't, you can't take no question. Right. Yo, Ezra, how you know it's the most size word? How you know? Come on, there's no questions, brother. <laughs> you know, here go our brother. About five thousand people in the back. Yo, Ezra. I got a question. You think Ezra going to sit there and ask a question? No. This is it. That's the way it's going down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We're giving you understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And if the people still understand, more than likely they would have to ask what? Their fathers in the house. Understand? Right. Or later on, come to the priest and get understanding. It wasn't that you couldn't just, you just after that, you still didn't understand it. You couldn't get it. You just have to later on and you could always come up to the temple and ask the priest, what do you mean by that? What does that mean? You could always understand. Understand? But right then and there, no. There was no questions. There was no, I got a question, brother. Put your hand down, man. Put your hand down and listen. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. we rock the crowd might turn around and jack them. Yeah, and jack them up. But at that particular point, nobody's going to say nothing. You know what I'm saying? Because the spirit of the Most High was there. He wasn't going to say nothing. Mm -hmm. Right? Because <laughs> you're right. The crowd would have said, look, man, you better shut the hell up. <laughs> go ahead, Art. Verse 9. Uh, now, read, now go down to the 14th verse. You want to um, 10? 14. Right. 14th verse. Verse 14. And they found written in the law which the Most High had commanded by Moses that the children of Israel should dwell in booths. Uh, how about that? See? They found written the law. They found written in the law that you're supposed to dwell in booths on the seventh month. 
How about that? Mm. That means it wasn't being done for a long period of time. Because mm -hmm. remember, we come back from the Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. It wasn't being done for a long period of time. So now the most is reinstituting the law statute for and the ceremonial laws at that point. So what do you think, what do you think about now? Same thing. Mm -hmm. We gotta reinstitute it. Right. Yeah, we gotta reinstitute it. Bring it back. And we, not not just me and his brother, all y'all brothers, you're gonna be the leaders that are gonna help the people get the sense of it and understanding of it to reinstitute it. That's why that's why you're being taught. That's why you're like the first fruit coming in. You're gonna be you're gonna be the leadership and the teachers are gonna teach the masses. Not only the Feast of Tabernacles, but all the High Holy Days and the Law of Statue of Commandments. Go ahead, up. In the feast of the seventh month, and that they should publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount and fetch olive branches and pine branches and myrtle branches and palm branches uh -huh. and branches of thick trees uh -huh. to make booths as it is written. How about that? See, to make booths, okay, as it is written. So what is what is booths in the Hebrew? Sakat. Or in the ancient Hebrew, huh? in the ancient Hebrew, kag ha sawak wath. Kag ha sawak wath. Feast of Booths. All right, that's what the Feast of Tabernacles is. Booths, Tabernacle is nothing but a tent or a booth. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's more known as Feast of Booths. Okay, come. Sure. Go ahead, up. Verse 16. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of his house, then in their courts, and in the courts of the in the courts of the house of the Mosai, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim. Yeah, wherever you can make a booth, you're going to celebrate this high holy day, right? If it's, you know, on the roof of your house. See, now you can't build nothing on these houses because the houses, the roofs go slant. slant. Mm -hmm. yeah. A house is not supposed to be built that way. Yeah, because I was reading something today, say, all the house is supposed to be created with the battlements. The battlements. Come. In case someone don't fall. Like right. That. The house is supposed to have, it's, it's supposed to be, you know, straight, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? With battlements all around it. And the battlements are supposed to go like that, like that, like that. Do you understand? So that if the enemy is coming, you can go on top of your roof and shoot them with bows and arrows or your gun or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But you can't do it on these houses. Why? You're going to fall down. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're slipping and sliding down because <laughs> all the roofs are like that. Esau's contrary, brother. He's just con he's just a devil, the Bible speaks of. See? But on the roof of your house on that day, you can build a, a, a booth. Why? Because the house is, is, is straight. Uh, the, the roof is straight. All right? And you can build, you can probably build several booths for you and your family. Understand? So, yeah. Go ahead, up. Verse 17. And all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun, until that day had not the children of Israel done so. How about that? Mm -hmm. Not since Joshua have the children of Israel uh, celebrated the High Holy Day, the Feast of Tabernacles. How about that, huh? And that would it said, read that one more time. It says, and... Uh, and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua the son of Nun, unto that day and not had not the children of Israel done so. They haven't done so from, from the time of Joshua up until that time when Ezra reinstituted the Feast of Tabernacles. They haven't dwelt in booths. How about that, huh? That's a long period of time, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely during the 70 years of captivity in the Babylonian Empire, we hadn't did it. But before that, when we were in Israel, we weren't, we weren't really doing it even then. It's, it's saying it here. We weren't really doing it. How about that, huh? 
Okay. Come here, Dana. Yes. Uh, so this is Joshua that was with Moses. Yeah. Come. That Joshua. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So did you read to the um, 18th verse? Um, okay, man. Okay, go ahead. And there was very great gladness. Verse 18. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of the Most High. From the first day, the Feast of Tabernacles, unto the last day. How about that, huh? Mm -hmm. Nothing but the law. See? But that's how you got to do it to Israel, because Israel is stubborn. <laughs> They're wicked as hell, huh? Mm -hmm. You got to sit Israel down, and they can't, there's nowhere for them to go. You sort of like them, they got to kidnap them. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, sit down here. You ain't going nowhere. You're going to hear this book of the law, you ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. you, you, I, I'll barely let you go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. That's about it. And come back. Yeah, back to us. You got to do that with Israel. Because Israel is stubborn, man. Mm -hmm. And they're easily distracted. Our people are easily distracted, man. Not right. in the world. Right? That's why the Most High, Yehovah Shai said, they can't hate you. It's me they hate it. Because mm -hmm. I testify because of all the works in the world are evil. Mm -hmm. So, if you easily distracted out there in the world, the Lord says it's the only evil you're distracted with. Mm -hmm. You know, but our people are so uh, so in tune to to the worldly things, and it's not of the Most High okay. at all. So that's why the Most High got to take it away from you, then purge you, then bring you into the wilderness, and now there's no place for you to go in the wilderness, is there? Yeah, you don't have all these distractions on the wilderness. So now you can be taught the law all day long. Go ahead, up. To the 18. That was it? No. Go ahead. And they kept the feast seven days. And on the eighth day was a solemn assembly. Yes, say it again. Seven days, eight days, a solemn assembly, meaning come together. Go ahead. According unto the men. And it's the high holy day of Shabbat. Come. Okay. And that, that, was, that was it on that one. And then Ezra, the third chapter, first verse. Ezra, the third chapter, first verse. Ezra, chapter mm -hmm. 3, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And when the seventh month was come, the children of Israel were in the cities. The people gathered themselves together as one man to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Then stood up Joshua, the son of Je Josada, and this Salaki, and his brethren the priests, and Zerubbabel, the son of she Shealtiel, and his brethren, and build the altar of the most high um, power of Israel to offer burnt offerings thereon. So Zerubbabel, Joshua and Zerubbabel. Okay, Joshua being this is not the Joshua that you during the time of Moses. Okay, come. come. This is a different Joshua now, but he was the high priest. And of course, Zerubbabel, one of the governors, the leaders. Okay, go ahead up. As it is written in the law of Moses, the men of the Most High. Yeah, they did it according to how it was supposed to be done in the law of, of Moses, according to the Most High. Okay, uh, you're reading to uh, the fourth verse. Come. Verse 3. And they set the altar upon his bases, and fear was upon them because of the people of those countries. And they offered burnt offerings thereon unto the Most High, even burnt offerings morning and evening. Morning and evening burnt offerings. Mm. See? Morning and evening. So the priests were busy. Go ahead. Verse 4. They kept also the Feast of Tabernacles. See, they kept the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. As it is written. As it is written in the Bible. Go ahead. And offered the daily burnt offerings by number. And offered the daily burnt offerings by number. How about that? And how do we know what number? When you go to Numbers 29, go to Numbers 29. Let me finish this up real quick. No, oh yeah, go ahead, finish it. According to the custom as the duty of every day required. How about that? So there was a burnt offering according to the custom. There was a number. It, you, you had to do it according to the number on, that, on what particular day during the seven days and, and the eighth day. There was a particular number of burnt offerings for that day. Okay, was it 29? I think uh, first verse. Read the first verse. First. Numbers chapter 29, verse 1. And in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Okay, go ahead. What's the first? What's the first high holiday of the seventh month? Trumpets. Blowing the trumpets. See? Holy convocation. 
Okay, go ahead. Ye shall do no servile work. Yeah, it's it, a high holy day. It's a Sabbath. Go ahead. It is a day of blowing uh, the trumpets unto you. Go ahead. And ye shall offer a burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Most High. One young bullock, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year without blemish. Okay, now jump okay. to the seventh verse. Seven. Mm -hmm. Verse seven. And ye shall have on the tenth day of the seventh month an holy convocation. What day? What high holy day is that? Atonement. Day of Atonement. atonement. So in the tenth day, a holy convocation. Now it says, "Afflict your souls." You should not do any work therein. So how do you afflict your soul? Do you beat yourself up? Fast. <laughs> yeah, fast is probably the highest affliction that you could probably come up with as far as afflicting your soul, unless unless you you know you're willing to offer your own body and kill yourself for the most high, mm. right? Mm -hmm. But I would say the Sabbath is probably one of the highest. Because some brothers are saying now that well we're not sure if we got a fast on the on 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 that day day of atonement. There's other afflictions you can do. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> what what else can you do? <laughs> do like some of these simple-minded Orthodox Christians beating them or the Muslims, they beat themselves up <laughs> with whips. Yes. Come on. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. That's not an affliction. You know why? Because what if you one of them ones that <laughs> Say, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> I ain't beat myself with a whip. Right, so that ain't, that's not going to work. And then you read in the scriptures how you have a shy fasted. Uh, right? 40 days he fasted. That's like the highest, highest uh, sacrifice or, uh, you know, affliction that you can do and for your body with abstaining from eating food. Because after that first day, you were pretty much okay. That second day, well, well wait a minute. <laughs> You're like, wait a minute. You smell, all of a sudden you start smelling stuff. <laughs> all these different smells start coming out of nowhere. Chicken, <laughs> lamb, everything start coming. There ain't nothing around, but you smell it anyway. <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, we don't know why, because you're hungry as hell. <laughs> and your body's saying, wait a minute, I ain't eating in a whole day. It's going on two days. See, that affliction start coming in, right? Yeah. As they say, medically, like the 36th day, your body starts to shut down. Starts to shut down. Die. Right. You start to die, right? Yeah. And the 36th, how about that? And, and some of us can't even go two days or three days. Right. Yeah, was shy went past the 36th day. Mm -hmm. He went 40. Angels had to hold him up. Yeah, had to hold him up. And you know, you know, Satan came to him. You know, Satan didn't come the first day. What day you think Satan came to him? <laughs> probably, probably, the, probably, the, probably the 39th day. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Knowing he's about to, you know what I'm saying? He didn't come to him. He came to him probably in the middle or something. He didn't come on the first, the second, the third day. Not even the 10th day. Right? Yeah, you come when you when you were hungry. You need something to drink. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Brother, you got a Mountain Dew I can borrow? <laughs> Something? <laughs> and that's the worst drink you could have, a Mountain Dew. But, you, but you'll take it, brother. <laughs> Shoot. So that's the highest form. I don't see, you know, it doesn't say fast, but it says afflict your soul. So how else are you going to do that? I don't see no other way. So don't hear all that other rhetoric, brother. I'm saying. Okay, go ahead, up. Um, ye shall not do any work therein. Verse 8. But ye shall offer a burnt offering unto the Most High for a sweet savor. See how, how all high holy days have an offering behind it? Mm -hmm. All of them have it, brother. Israel ultimately is going to come back to that. Now jump down to the, um, four, what is it? Uh, 12, 12 verses. 12 verses? Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, verse 12, and on the 15th day of the seventh month, ye shall have a holy convocation. Mm -hmm. Ye shall do no servile work, and ye shall keep a feast unto the Most High seven days. And ye shall offer a burnt offering, a sacrifice made by fire, mm -hmm. of a sweet savor unto the Most High. Thirteen young bullocks, two rams, and fourteen lambs. Of the first year. And how about that? That was the first day, right? See the Mosai, see, according to the number, see, we're not gonna read every, all of it, but I, that first one, it just tells you that's the first day. 
Mm -hmm. See, read how many it was. 13 what? 13 young bullocks. 13 young bullocks. Go ahead. Two rams. Two rams. Go ahead. And 14 lambs of the first year. So 14 lambs of the first year. How about that? That's for the first day. Now, now the second day has to happen. The third day has to happen. The fourth day has to happen. Today. Mm -hmm. Understand? So as I'm showing you that uh, these high holy days were celebrated, but it was on a high level. Now we're just so used to coming. Uh, you know, it's a feast. We got food ready. You eat. You don't know what the high, the priest had to go through. You know what I'm saying? And, and offering up these offerings to the Most High. It was a lot of work, man. A lot of work. Yeah. They were just showing that not only do we feast, but the Most High also feasts. Uh, how about that? Most High's partying with you. <laughs> you think the Most High just sits up there? No, the Most High parties too. See? He's feasting too. He's having a good time also. Come? Come. Yeah. All right. And so, um, I want you to read this in the Josephus. You read, right here, Josephus, it's, it's Josephus, okay? Mm -hmm. Page 79, and brothers, you should read the Josephus because you get all the history of Israel. Read the Josephus, get the book. See how thick it is? It's a thick book, but it's, it's the antiquities and the wars all right, of Israel, what we went through as far as the wars and the Romans came and attacked us, all right? But the antiquities give you all that information, all the history of uh, Israel and what happened. And it gives it to you, uh, it refines it for you. It gives it to you uh, in other areas where, you know, the Bible can't pick it up. The Josephus gives it to you. Okay, so you're gonna read right here, uh, page 79, that's chapter 10. And that's uh, uh, four. Book of Josephus, uh, page 79, chapter 10, verse, well, four, yeah. Yeah. Fourth paragraph. Like, yeah, fourth, yeah. Upon the 15th day of the same month, when the season of the year is changing for winter, the law enjoins us to pitch tabernacles in every one of our houses so that we preserve our, yes, so we that we preserve ourselves from the cold of that time of the year, as also that when we should arrive at our own country and come to the city which we should have then for our metropo metropolis, mm -hmm. because of the temple therein to be built. Yeah, because now we remember Joseph had realized we're in the wilderness here, so he's he's teaching it in a way that we're not in the land of Canaan yet. We're not in Israel yet, okay? So he's just going by what he reads out of uh, the Old Testament, all right? And so he's, he's describing the high holy days, and the Feast of Tabernacles is one of them. So go ahead, up. And keep the festival for eight days, and offer burnt offerings, and sacrifice, thank offerings, mm -hmm. that we should then carry in our hands a branch of myrtle, and a willow, and a bowl of the palm tree, mm -hmm. with the addition of the palm, palm citron, mm -hmm. that the burnt offering on the first of those days was to be a sacrifice of 13 bulls. There you go. So where did you read that? You just read it, right? In the Lord. In Numbers, right? Numbers. 13 bulls. Go ahead. And 14 lambs. Go ahead. And 15 rams. Go ahead. With the addition of a kid of the goats. As an expi expiation for sins. Uh, expiation, yeah. Expiation for sins. Atonement. Atonement for your sins. Go ahead. And on the following days, the same number of lambs and of rams and the kid of the goats, but abating one of the bulls every day till they amounted to seven only. Right. <laughs> okay. So that's, that's it on that one. And one more to Josephus. Page... Um, 176 and it's chapter uh, I think it's chapter 4 okay. that's 4 and it's in Roman numeral but 4 read from there and you're going to go down to here okay okay go ahead <clears throat> okay when King Solomon had finished these works these large and beautiful buildings and had laid up his donations in the temple and all this in the interval of seven years. 
and had given a demonstration of his riches and he Atlanta. built the, he built the temple in seven years how elaborate that thing was uh, you know it, it's really a uh, sort of the spirit of the most high in our people to really build the temple with only in seven years how elaborate that thing was it, it would take probably you know probably 20 years to understand the way it was built but they did it in seven Solomon's own house it took more time than that. Mm. Solomon's house was built in 13. Mm. The temple was only built in 7. Okay, go ahead, up. A demonstration of his riches and alacrity alacrity uh -huh. therein. In so much that anyone who saw it would have thought it must have been an immense time ere it could have been finished. Right, go ahead. And would be surprised that so much should be finished in a short time. Right. How about that? Go ahead. Short, I mean, if compared with the greatness of the work. He also wrote to the rulers and elders of the Hebrews and ordered all the people to gather themselves together to Jerusalem, both to see the temple which he had built and to remove the ark of the Most High into it. And when, he, when this invitation of the whole body of the people to come to Jerusalem was Every, everywhere carried abroad. It was the seventh month before they came together. You see, did we just read that, right? In the scriptures? The seventh month before they came together. Okay, go ahead. I, so, showing you that a lot of events, so a lot of events of Israel was held until the seventh month came. So that they could celebrate it along with the high holy day and so forth. Do you understand? All right, go ahead. Up. Which month is by our countrymen called this this three yeah but by the macedonians hyperbarutras right go ahead the feast of tabernacles the feast of tabernacles go ahead happened to fall at the same time it happened to fall at the same time but do you really think it would just happen that way the most i had it that way do you understand most i had it fall that way right on time the feast of tabernacles okay come go ahead I'm. which was kept by the hebrews as a most holy and most eminent feast. See? Most holy and most eminent feast. This is the Feast of Tabernacles. I know a lot of us look at the Passover. The Passover is too. But here's the Feast of Tabernacles. Most holy and most eminent feast. Go ahead, up. So they carried the ark and the tabernacle which Moses had pitched. And all the vessels that were uh, for administration. Uh -huh. So that's it on that, right? That's come, it. Come. All right. So that's in the book of the Josephus. Okay, that's in the book of the Josephus. Now, um, uh, I just want to show you in um, uh, get First Ezra five forty seven in the Apocrypha. I'm just going to read that. Then we're just going to go to the New Testament. You got it. Come, come, come. First Ezra five. First Ezra five forty seven. Then we go to the New Testament and show you how the Mashiach himself celebrated. The Feast of Tabernacles. First Ezra, chapter 5, verse 47. But when the seventh month was at hand, and when the children of Israel were ever, every man in his own place, they came all together with one consent into the open place of the first gate, which is toward the east. Then stood up Yahweh Shah, the son of Jes this is Je Jehoshadak. Jehoshadak. This is Joshua again. Come. Come. Okay. This is Joshua. Okay. And, Go ahead. And his brethren, the priests. Yeah, because he was the high priest. Joshua was the high priest at this time. Go ahead up. And Zerubbabel, the son of Selethiel, right. and his brethren, and made ready the altar of the Most High Power of Israel. See? Go ahead. To offer burnt sacrifices upon it, according according as it is expressly commanded in the book of Moses, the men of the Most High. Okay, go ahead. And there were gathered unto them out of the other nations of the land, and they erected the altar upon his own place, because all the nations of the land were at enmity with them and oppressed yeah, so, them. So, so our people came from other nations, right? Because remember, we were coming from what? The Babylonian captivity. Right. And not only from Babylon, but from the other nations that we were scattered mm -hmm. around uh, into also. All right? And we were coming back into the land. 
Okay, come. Go ahead up. And they offered sacrifices according to the time and burnt offerings to the Most High, both morning and evening. Morning and evening. Once again, morning and evening. Go ahead. Also, they held the Feast of Tabernacles. They held the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. As it is commanded in the law, and offered sacrifices daily as was meat. As was meat. Okay, so that's it. That's it right there. And then you get uh, John, right? The seventh chapter and the first, second verse. So now, here we go now into the New Testament, the Gospels. You always want to show in the Gospels how the Mosai teaches us concerning the commandments. Because the Christian churches always teach what? That you don't have to keep these laws and keep the ceremonial laws. And it's just, you just got to have faith in, in Yahweh Shai. Well, all that is true. But even then, even the Christian churches, they don't even, you know, they don't, they don't represent Yahweh Shai. They always say, you know, Jesus, right? They always, you know, understand? So they're not even in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. But the spirit of the Mashiach teaches us to keep the uh, Feast of Tabernacles and the other High Holy Days as well. Okay? Because that's, that's where we're coming back. We're coming back to all that. Okay? Nothing is done away with. The laws, of, even the laws of sacrifice are done away with temporarily. But they're coming back. Okay? When Israel is redeemed and uh, the salvation of Israel. Of Yahshua. Okay, go ahead, up. Call that again, John. Yeah, uh, John 7 and 1. John chapter 7, verse 1. After these things, Jehovah Shah walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. The Jews, <laughs> yeah, it, we sought to kill Jehovah Shah, right? Because why? Lack of understanding what Jehovah Shah was teaching us. You understand? Because. Yahweh Shai wasn't so much teaching us to break the commandments or, or not go after the commandments. See? So that's what the Pharisees didn't understand. Because the Pharisees were, what, strict letter of the law uh, type sex, weren't they? The Sadducees and the Pharisees? Letter of the law. Even Paul was letter of the law. Paul didn't understand Yahweh Shai until Yahweh Shai had to come to him. Even Paul didn't understand. Understand? So. That's why Yahweh Shai said, Paul, you can't kick against the pricks. You can't defeat me. You can't destroy this. So Yahweh Shai had to blind him for three days and three nights. Now you're going to wake up then, aren't you? You can't, <laughs> yeah, you can't see nothing for three days and three nights. You're going to wake up then. Understand? Then Paul understood what Yahweh Shai was talking about. Okay? So... So Yahweh Shai was bringing in the Gospels, and our people couldn't understand it, so they sought to kill him. And mostly they were led by the Sadducees, Pharisees and Sadducees. They were led by the Sadducees to, to uh, seek to kill Yahweh Shai. But of course, you had the ones of our people that sought out Yahweh Shai and wanted to, hear, wanted to hear the Gospel, wanted to hear the truth, wanted to hear the Word. Okay, so go ahead, up. Yeah, real quick. So that's going to replay again the first the so called Christians are yeah. going to put us to death. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's scripture say that. Mm -hmm. It says some of you there should be caused to be put to death. Put to death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, but that's where the Mosai said he that seek to save his life shall lose his life. Right? And he that loses his life for the Mosai shall save it. Allow your body to become a living sacrifice. That's how you save it. Okay. Remember uh, Abraham? He was about to uh, sacrifice Isaac. Mm -hmm. What happened? The spirit of the Mosai came down like lightning. He said, hold up, hold up, Abraham. Don't kill your only son. I was just trying to check out things. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to see what you want to do with that. I was just kidding around. It's okay. <laughs> Imagine the angels like, Abraham. I was just playing around, man. I didn't mean for you to kill your own son. Imagine that, right? And Abraham said, because Abraham walked up that mountain, you know what I'm saying? And had, you know, you think Isaac was a little boy? Isaac was a grown man. Isaac was a grown man. He knew what was happening. Isaac was willing, too. He was willing. He said, Lord, if, if the, look, at, look, Dad, if this is what the most I want, I'm all for it. Yeah. He was all for it. 
Isaac wasn't a little boy. So you mm. think that he was like like 10 years old or something, or you know, even less than that. No, Isaac was a grown man this time. <laughs> yeah, and what happened? Abraham said, hey, this is what the most I want. So he laid him on the altar. Isaac freely got up on the altar, you know what I'm saying, and he laid down. He was willing to do it. Okay? The sacrifice. He understood what the most I wanted. Mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. Yeah, he even told his father to tie the ropes tighter. Yeah, tighter. Yeah. 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 yeah, in case he tried to get out, right. <laughs> because you know, at that last moment, you start like, wait a minute, wait a minute now. <laughs> yeah, Dad, I know what I said, Dad. <laughs> but this ain't happening now. <laughs> get me out of this thing now. I'm just kidding. Right, but that's, you know, that last moment. Because even Yahweh Shai felt that, right? Mm -hmm. Yahweh Shai felt that. Too. Yeah, Yahweh Shai felt that. You, you feel that, right? So, um,. So the, the spirit of Moses came down like lightning and said, wait, whoa, wait a minute, Abraham, I'm not, no, not now. I was just, you know, trying to see, check out things, see if you were real. Are you a real brother or what? Mm -hmm. So he said that was accounted to Abraham for righteousness, mm -hmm. the fact that he was going to do that. You have sons, some of you have sons. Can you take your son and lay him on the altar? Oh, man. <laughs> right, now think about it, right? Think how hard, you know. Yeah, so that's why it was counted for him for righteousness, man. See? All right. So, uh, so the so the Jews sought to kill him because they had no understanding. We didn't, you know, especially the Pharisees. They don't have no understanding. All right. That's why Scripture says we draw near Yahweh with our mouths, see, but our hearts, which is your mind, far from Him. Yeah. See, no understanding. We draw near with the Most High, and. Um, we have a zeal, the like scripture said, we have a zeal, not, not according to righteousness. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, up. <clears throat> John chapter 7, verse 2. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. Yeah, there you go. It was at hand, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. See? Did Yahweh Shai tell the people, don't celebrate it? No. Mm -hmm. He wasn't telling the people that. Okay. He wasn't telling, he, he celebrated the Passover. He didn't tell the, the 12 disciples, don't go get the lamb over there because I'm the lamb. No, he said, go get the lamb over there. Mm -hmm. Right. But the, but the disciples understood afterwards that he was the lamb. He was. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. He was the lamb. See, so they understood that. So the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead, up. His brethren therefore said unto him. Yeah, this is Yahweh Shai's brothers. His literal brothers. Yeah. His actual family, huh? Go ahead, huh? Go ahead. Depart hence and go into Judea, that thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. How about that? So that thy disciples may see the work that thou doest. How about that? Okay, go into Judea so your disciples be able to see it. So this is brothers are saying this. Okay. You have a shot I had brothers too? Okay, go ahead, huh? For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. Okay, go ahead. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Yeah, see? So his, his brothers are saying, show thyself to the, to the world, meaning Israel. Show thyself to Israel and show the works that you do. Teach them and show the works. See? Don't hide from them. Show thy works. That's why Yahweh Shai said, what about a candle? Put a candle in the room so it can light up the room. Mm -hmm. and be seen. Mm -hmm. But you don't put it somewhere where it can't be seen because the light's not going to be seen. Right. Right. See? So you, you got to show forth the light. <clears throat> and so that's why when we go out there and speak uh, on the highways and byways, you always go to the highways and byways where there's what? Where, where there's the people. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where you have the number of the people going by. Mm -hmm. But if you go into a little corner somewhere nobody can barely see you, you're just speaking to the wind. You just speaking to the wind. Even the angels are like, what the hell is he doing? <laughs> you know, you're speaking to nobody. I, I see that sometimes. I'll be driving. I see brothers over there in the corner, like way over there in the corner, just reading the Bible. Nobody's standing by them. Nobody's listening. They're just teaching into a camera or something. I'm just speaking to the wind. I can't do that, brother. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. You put me on a highway and byway mm -hmm. with the masses of the people going by. You know what I'm saying? Just going by. Yeah, they're going by. They hear it. They may not stand listening, but at least you know they, they hear it. They hear the word. Right. And somebody's walking by you. Even if they give you 20 seconds, they heard something. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, of course, then the Spirit of the Most High takes over, and then you got one person listening. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all you need, one person. 
what, what, when I was when I was your brother's age and coming up, when I had one person, I went to work, brother. I went to work like I was teaching a thousand people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And I blocked out everything else just for that one person. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, after about maybe you know 10, 20 minutes, another person stood by that. Now I got two. Mm -hmm. Now I work, I work doubly hard for those two. You know what I'm saying? And if that's all it was, and the whole time I was speaking, I was fine with that. Because <laughs> I was just so happy somebody was even listening. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because some, sometimes you may get like a bum or somebody listening, right? Some, you know, a little, little derelict or whatever listening. But you're so happy that even he listening, you're happy about that. Mm -hmm. See? Because with that, you can use that to bring somebody else, mm -hmm. spirit bring somebody else. Now you got four or five people. That's it. Mm -hmm. See? And so that's why you're supposed to speak uh, in the spirit and it, with all your heart. Mm -hmm. See? Don't say, oh, it's only one person. I can't speak. You know what I'm saying? I need about 500 people and then I'll be able to speak. No. <laughs> then the, right. Understand? So you, you're looking for the, the crowd and all that. You know, don't look for the crowd. The crowd's going to come, you know what I'm saying, from maybe that, your crowd is maybe that one or two. Mm -hmm. See? Not a thousand, it's the one or two. Okay. Remember, the most I said, one by one, he gonna bring us to Zion. Mm. So maybe that's the one the most I wanted. Mm. And that's it. You did your job. Mm. <laughs> your job was to teach that one, that's what the most I wanted at the time. That's just your job, see? But you're so, you're so uh, high-minded mm -hmm. and looking for the, you know, the 500 or whatever, the 100 there, see? And then that's, that's, um, you know, you're trying to exalt yourself, and the Most High is not looking for that. Right. See? Because the Most High can take that, that spirit of wisdom from you and knowledge from you and give it to somebody else. See? All right. So go ahead, up. So his brethren are telling him, Go through Judea to teach the word. Go ahead. Verse 5 For neither did his brethren believe in him. Verse 6 See, even some of his brothers didn't believe in him. How about that? What, did, what do you have a shy say about a prophet? Not his own country. He's not accepted his own country or family. <laughs> How about that? Say, go ahead. Verse 6. Then Yahweh shall said unto them, My time is not yet come. My time is not yet come. Okay, go ahead. But your time is always ready. Yeah, yeah, right? How about that? Our time is always ready. His time is not yet come. So it wasn't time for Yahweh Shai to be, uh, you know, like presented before. The, you know, the people and so forth. And of course, it wasn't time for him to be crucified. All right? Remember, his time was when, what? When he came into the city on what? A donkey. A donkey. Right. And then they were saying, Hosanna, see? The king, the king of the Jew, Jews. Jews. Hosanna, they were, they were praising him. That was his time. That was his time. But of course, right after that, that was, he was crucified. I think it was the next day, next couple days after that, he was crucified. Okay, so that was his time then. But at that time, he's saying it's not my time. Yet. Go ahead, up. Verse 7 The world cannot hate you. See, the world can't hate you. Go on. But me, it hated. It hated you. How was shy? Go ahead. Because I testify of it. Because he testified of. Go ahead. That the works thereof are evil. All the works in the world are evil. So, who is all these leaders and all these Christian folk going to try to make the works in the world righteous? See? If if most sides says it's evil, it's evil. You can't try to turn it around now. See, you can't make that which is evil into something good. Woe unto them who call a uh, good evil and evil good. Mm -hmm. so you can't turn around. You can't kosher a pig. <laughs> but Esau said, "I can." Yeah. Esau said, "I can." Wicked. Yeah. That's what Esau said. Right? He said he can. <laughs> See, a leper can't change his spots. Okay. So, but you know, so that's why our people are trying to change what's in the world. You can't change the white man. Right. You can't change the other nations. They are who they are. You can't right. change them. See, that's where we failed at that. We're trying to change the world. Cause we we trying to change the world. Our people are trying to change the world to fit, so that they can fit in it and then do what they want to do in the world. Live live wickedly. Live evil. See? Go ahead up. Verse 8, go ye up unto this feast, 
I go not up until this fe until this feast, for my time is not yet come. So, so come. yeah, so Yahweh Shah said, I go not up until this feast, my time is not yet come. Now he's talking in reference to the Feast of Tabernacles. Go ahead. When he had said these words unto them, he abode still in Galilee. See? Now Galilee, Galilee is what? You know, you know how long Galilee is from Mount Zion? It's far, brother. It's far. So you have, Galilee is north in northern Israel. Okay. Uh, Mount Zion. Okay. More south. It's more, even more south. So Galilee is about, you know, I looked it up. It's about 130 something odd miles yeah, from where the time. temple would, would have been, Mount Zion, compared to where Galilee is. So Yahushai is still in Galilee. And they're telling him you know, to go up to the Feast of Tabernacles and show yourself. He said, my time is not that come. And we've been to Galilee. And when we were in Tel Arad, where Mount Zion is at, it took us about two hours. Okay, it took us about two hours to get to Galilee. Drive. Took us two, about two hours. A little over two hours. See how far it is? And you know there were no automobiles back then. <laughs> right. Right. Okay, go ahead, up. Verse 10. But when his brethren were going up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. See, he went in secret. Because why? His time was not yet come. To be praised as, what, the, the king of the Jews. And so it was not yet come. So he, he went, he went still, but in secret. He had to be okay. there. That's Lord. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, where is he? Where is he? Where is this man who teaches this, this doctrine? Where is he? They're looking for him. Go ahead. And there was much murmuring among the people concerning him. Much murmuring amongst the people concerning him. For just, just like now, there's murmuring, right? Mm -hmm. teach, teach that word. I don't know if it's in your own household or somewhere. There's going to be some murmuring. Right? right? There's going to be murmuring. There's always murmuring. Uh, okay. Because why? Yahweh said it. He testified to all the works of evil. So you're going to teach the, the word. You're going to teach. You're teaching against what they're doing out in the world. So there's going to be what? Murmuring. Right? Go ahead. He is a good man. Others said, nay, but he deceiveth the people. How be it no man spake openly of him for fear of the Jews. Okay, go ahead. Now about the midst of the feast, Yahweh went up into the temple and taught. Yeah, see? In the midst of the feast, where was Yahweh shot? In the temple. In the temple. Teaching. Teaching the word of the Most High. Okay, go ahead. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Yeah. How does this man know letters, right? Meaning, how does he know the gospel? How does he know the scriptures? And having never learned. Right? In other words, right. He wasn't taught by the Pharisees. He wasn't taught by uh, their, their school and curriculum of how you're supposed to be taught. Because <laughs> I've never seen them in my class. That's what they say. i never seen them. You know? I did five years in that class. I didn't see this man. Now, how did he get on this level and I'm not on that level? See? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. Understand? Okay, go ahead, up. Verse 16. Yahweh shall answer them and say, My doctrine is not mine. Yeah, see? Now Yahweh shall is going to teach him. My doctrine is not mine. He's teaching what? He's going to say, It's the most eyes. And the most eyes sent me to teach you this. Go ahead, up. But his that sent me. His that sent me. Go ahead. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether yeah. it be of the most high. Yeah, because if you're going to do what the most I ask you to do, you're going to know that it's not of man to do uh, uh, these commandments, laws, and statutes. It's not of man. It's the most I. See? The Spirit will show you that. 
but because they're not willing to submit themselves or humble themselves to do the law, statute, and commandment, they don't know. They, they don't know that in their minds it's, it's probably man that's bringing it anyway. That's what I was looking at. So, go ahead, up. <laughs> um, whether it be of the Most High or whether I speak of myself, he that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory, that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Okay, go ahead. Did not Moses give you the law? Moses gave you the law, go ahead. And yet none of you keepeth the law. Yeah, how about that? Go ahead. <laughs> Why go ye about to kill me? Yeah, see, none of them kept the law, right? But Moses gave them the law, and none of them kept the law. So here come Yahawashai, going to teach you uh, what the Most High is saying, but now they want to kill him for that. See? So our people were um, twisted in their mindset. <laughs> yeah, they all right, <laughs> just like they are now. Go ahead, up. In verse 20, the people answered and said, Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thou hast a devil who goeth about to kill thee. But they were, uh, they were, some of the people were saying that, but they were out to kill them. Okay. And yeah, some of the people that were saying that didn't know that the Pharisees, they were out to kill them. Okay. Because they didn't want their positions taken away. Okay, go ahead, up. The, um, verse 21, Yahweh shall answer and said unto them, I have done one work, and ye all marvel. Moses therefore gave unto you circumcision, not because it is of Moses, but of the fathers. The Most High. Go ahead. And ye on the Sabbath day circumcise a man. If a man on the Sabbath day receives circumcision, that the law of Moses should not be broken, are ye angry at me because I have made a man ever, every, every whit whole Hold. on the Sabbath day? Right, there you go. Now they had a problem with Yahweh Shai healing on the Sabbath. But Yahweh Shai broke it down to them that if you, if you have a son or a daughter and the baby is brought forth on the Sabbath, aren't you still going to circumcise them? Yes, you are. So that the law that the Most High gave Moses won't be broken. You're still going to do it. That's right. So what's wrong with Yahweh Shai healing somebody who's sickly, maybe about to die on the Sabbath? Why are you going to get angry at that? Because on the Sabbath... If you're sick, aren't you going to go, you know, to the doctor? Aren't you? If you're really yeah. sick, aren't you going to go? Yeah. Yeah. You're still going to go, brother. You are you going to listen to me and say, look, brother, it's the Sabbath. You can't uh, you can't die just yet. <laughs> you got to wait before you die, brother. You know, I know you're sick and everything, but uh, it's the Sabbath. So you're not, not going to say that, right? Your daughter or son got a fever. You're going to say, no, hold your fever up. It's the Sabbath. You can't go to the doctor yet. Say, no, you're not going to do that. So. So Yahweh Shai had all these different debates with our people. Good. Yeah. Understand? So he was giving them the sense and the understanding of the law also. Because our people were the letter of the law. So Yahweh Shai was giving them the sense and the understanding, okay, of the, of the law, statute, and commandments. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say with that, let's go. We don't go no more. So with that, oh, Shabbat real Shalom. Quick, real, quick, oh, you don't mind. Uh, real quick, if you don't mind. Hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16. Yeah. Future oh, yeah, but that's, that's a good scripture. Yeah, he's right. It's a good scripture. Zechariah 14, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king. Right. The Most High of hosts and to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. And to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So you heard what he said? To keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So, ultimately, what's going to happen? All the nations, once Israel is redeemed and back as the chosen people on top and ruling this earth, all the nations ultimately are going to keep the Feast of Tabernacles also. Come. 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 It's going to come down to that. All right, come. And uh, there is one, oh, you're going to finish that, but you're going to get one in Deuteronomy 30 and 1 after you finish reading that. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, the most high of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Right. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not 
that have no rain, there shall there be a plague, wherewith the Most High will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Right, so all nations got to come up in that day to keep the Feast of Tabernacles, or there will be no rain. How about that? Okay. Now go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy, uh, I'm looking at Deuteronomy 31, I think it's the 12th verse. Okay, read that for us. Deuteronomy 31, 12? Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 12. Gather the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger that is within thy gate. See, the stranger also that's within thy gate. See? So gather... So, the scripture he just read in Zechariah 14, the stranger, the other nations, they got to come up to celebrate the Feast of Tabernacles. So here the Mosiah is telling our people, and we're in the wilderness here, gather all the people together, men and women and children, and thy stranger, see the other nations, go ahead. That they may hear, and that they may learn, and fear the Mosiah of power. And observe to do all the words of this law. Right, see? So ultimately what? The other nations are going to have to fear the Most High and observe the words of this law and the law of statutes and commandments. The ceremonial laws and all the laws of the Most High. But that's once Israel is redeemed and moved back on top. Mm -hmm. Come? Come. Right. Okay. So with that, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat.